Never taken a cruise before? At one time, we were all cruise rookies and not quite sure what to expect. There's a lot that's different in cruising compared to other vacations. Even if you are a veteran, sometimes you can still get thrown for a loop. Whether you're a first time passenger or you have sailed before, here are a number of things that may surprise you about taking a cruise. If you're taking a week long, a seven day cruise with three ports of call, you might think that means you have three days at port and four days at sea. The ratio is actually more like one day at port and six days at sea. That's because the ship is actually only in port for about eight or nine hours on average before they sail away again. For instance, a ship might dock at 8 a.m. and have all aboard be at 4 p.m. Added up, a seven day trip often has only about 24 hours of time combined in ports of call. Cruise lines, they are moving toward having longer port stays in some cases, but by and large, you'll spend a morning and an afternoon in port, but the rest of your day on the ship. Everyone knows that cruise ships are big, but it's not until you're actually at the port getting ready to board that you realize how big they can be. Consider that cruise ships, they can rise 200 feet above the water, the equivalent of a 20 story building. Meanwhile, today's new ships are almost always more than a thousand feet long, which is longer than a typical city block. On the ship, you get an even greater appreciation for the size. Inside the ship are full promenades, restaurants, and thousands of cabins. There are nightclubs, atriums, double-decker theaters, and more. Everything that you would expect to be in a modern resort is on a cruise ship, and it's a full-size version not something that's scaled down to fit on the ship. A few times a year, there's always a news story about a cruise ship that hits a storm. The most compelling of these stories have video filmed on the ship of the rocking and rolling as the cruise ship fights through the waves. The truth is 99% of cruises aren't like this at all. In fact, given the ships and the technology designed to make the ship sail smoothly, most of the time you don't even feel the ocean. It's not to say you won't feel the ship moving at all. If the waves are big enough, you can definitely feel it rock a little bit or sometimes hit the waves. But if you are expecting that you'll feel the movement of the ocean constantly, that's likely not the case. Think that it's going to be easy to navigate the ship. Think again, it famously takes even seasoned cruisers like myself a couple of days to get my bearings on a new ship. That's not to say that you will get lost and not be able to find your way back to the cabin. After all, if you just walk a little bit, you'll eventually find elevators or stairs that can take you to the deck that you want to be. Instead, I'm referring to the fact that it's very easy, very easy to get turned around. You walk forward on the ship when you want to walk back and vice versa. It's as easy as to do when you were in the hallways with the cabins. Row after row of cabin doors that all look the same and no windows in the hallway, remember, it can make it feel like a maze. Don't worry though, after a day or two, you'll be navigating the ship like a pro. One tip, recognize the major spots like the pool deck, the dining room, and the promenade and use those as landmarks to get your bearings around the ship. Say 4,000 people plus crew on a ship that's the size of a city block Yes, cruise ships are large, but they also have a lot of people. If you head to the pool on a sunny day, it will be packed. What's surprising, however, is that you can still find plenty of quiet spots on cruise ships if you want to get away from the crowds. In the evenings, the pool decks, they clear out, giving you practically the entire area to yourself. Inside the ship, it's a little bit of the same story. Places like the ship's library are quiet and few people are usually there. In fact, most people don't even know the ships have libraries. Each ship is a little different depending on the layout and the venues. It might take a day or two to discover the spots that don't attract a lot of people. But once you do figure it out, you can have your own little private space despite being on a full cruise ship. Massages, artwork, drink packages, jewelry, the list goes on. These things and much more are what you will be pitched as a passenger on a cruise ship. You might think that once you've bought your ticket that you are done spending money. In fact, about 30 to 40% of cruise line revenue, it comes from spending on board by passengers. 
and you'll definitely be tempted to spend. From announcements over the intercom to stacks of sales flyers delivered to your stateroom door, it's almost shocking how much advertising you can be hit with when you are on a cruise. To be fair, if you're looking to purchase a massage or something else on the ship, then these flyers or sales announcements, they can tell you about discounts that can save you money. But if you're not in a shopping mood, honestly, they can simply be an annoyance. If you're like most people, then you think about flying when you are packing luggage these days. Air travel and baggage, they are like oil and water. Between the bag fees the airlines charge, carry-on space, and having to check luggage, honestly, it is a pain to pack hardly anything if you were flying. You might be surprised, though, that cruising is completely different if you've never sailed before. Have two big suitcases? Bring them on. What about full bottles of shampoo? You can bring those, too. And what if you only have a small suitcase? That's fine as well. In short, there are very few restrictions on the size of your luggage and how much you can bring. Best of all, there are no charges for bags. So pack big, little, or in between. It's all allowed on ship and you don't have to worry about the cost. That said, there are a few restrictions on what you can bring, but they are pretty simple. Just don't bring on any beer or liquor, nor should you bring on anything that might start a fire. Things like candles or clothes irons. Hair straighteners and curling irons, those are okay. Oh yeah, don't bring any weapons or drugs either. Even things like pot that may be legal in some states aren't allowed on the cruise ships. By the time you board the ship, you should be well aware of gratuities and their charges. These days, the fees are applied automatically to your account. In fact, you might have already paid your daily gratuity amounts by the time that you actually step onto the ship. But that doesn't mean that you are all done with tipping. On the cruise, pretty much any consumable or service that you buy, I'm talking things like food, drink, spa services, it's gonna have an automatic gratuity tacked on. This amount is usually 18 to 20% of the cost, depending on the cruise line. So a $100 massage is actually going to cost around 120, and an $8 beer is actually closer to 10 bucks. These charges are tacked on automatically to the price, but be careful. When you get the bill, it will have the price with the gratuity added and then another line for an additional tip. You feel like being generous? Then by all means, tip more. However, it is not required. Now, I'm not saying that everyone on a cruise ship is always full of sunshine and rainbows. But if you're on a cruise, it's a good chance the person next to you is going to be in vacation mode as well. That means in general, people are in a great mood on the ship. It makes it easy to strike up a conversation, share a drink, and make new friends. So if you're a first timer, don't be shocked if you actually make a few new buddies after a little time on the ship, even if you weren't necessarily trying to. So if you're headed to Alaska on your first cruise, you likely know to pack for cold weather. But if you're headed to the Caribbean, you might be shocked that it gets cool there too. During the day, you don't have much to worry about. Caribbean days, they are sunny and warm. Even occasional rainy days are still pretty comfortable. During the evenings, however, the temperatures drop. It might only drop into the 70s, but at sea with the wind blowing as the ship moves through the night, the wind chill can make it pretty cool. It's at least jacket or hoodie weather, if you don't just decide to stay inside the ship instead. And inside, the ship's AC can sometimes work a little too well in some spots. Bottom line, you're going to want to bring something a little warm, even if you travel in the middle of summer. Thanks for watching, but now I want to know what shocked you about the first time you took a cruise. Lots of first timers will be watching this video, so it's helpful for you to put your experience below in the comments to help them out before their first cruise. As always, I hope that you'll consider subscribing for more tips and advice, and you can always get ready for your next cruise by visiting cruisely.com. Until next time, Happy sailing.